right, everyone. I am out in the country in Nebraska. Here, let me show you on the map. There I am, the blue uh, arrow, or the blue dot with the white arrow. So Omaha is to the south, southeast. Got Sioux Falls to the north. Uh, Des Moines over here, straight east. Nowhere near an interstate. I am definitely in the country. Um, let's see. One of the things I was going to start doing is showing you my miles. So, uh, let's see. Here we go. Can you read that? 94,215 miles on the Bronco right now. Anyway. I am in the town of Randolph. Small town, about 880 people here now. Peak population was 100 years ago. In 1920, there were 1,338 people here. Median age of this town is 39. I'm going to make a right hand turn here and head into downtown. And tell you some more. 55% of the town is female. 88% of the town is white. 9% is Hispanic. Last 3% is mixed. All right, it is a Sunday. Last Sunday in June. So, it's, so it looks a little quiet. We're getting close to 4th of July, so they've got a lot of flags up. It's about 10 a.m. It's actually a little bit of traffic here and there for a Sunday. The median household income in this town is almost $63,000. A year. Uh, that's a little over 1200 a week. That's the recurring theme in the towns I'm about to show you. Incomes are pretty high. These, you know, this looks like a rundown, fading town. I mean, here, you're seeing it for yourself as I drive into downtown. But the incomes in these towns, they all look like this, is really high. So, uh, it's kind of an odd thing. Poverty is very low too. 7% uh, in this town. Well guys, I'm out on foot. I decided I want to get out here and show you some of the treasures here in this little downtown. Oh, there's a little wind. Hopefully you're not hearing too much winch here, but anyway. Yeah, welcome to Mrs. Bubba's. So it looks like they have a uh, pub or bar of some sort down here. A lounge, it says. This is pretty cool. Here, let's check out the sign here. Let me get out in the light so you can see it better. Uh, let me change this. Yeah. How awesome is that, huh? That is too cool. Now here on the other side of the street, looks like they have more pubs. Bikers welcome. Got a place here called the Drunken Moose. Drunken Moose. Now that would be something to see. Old Mountain Dew sign. Uh, that's worth some money at a uh, flea market. Anyway, uh, here we go. Nebraska Finest Meats. All kinds of cool stuff down here. Jim's Food Center, right there. Looks like the town grocery store. Right here in downtown. That's pretty cool. 
Now here in the middle of the intersection, which looks like the main intersection of town, looks like they have a bulletin board. <laughs> Should we go see what it says? Thursday night markets, come hungry, traveling Tiger Tavern. Food truck will be at the farm Thursday night. How cool is that, huh? Squirt. Never an after thirst. True words have never been spoken, am I right? It's a great old sign. Is it open? I don't know if Mona's is open or not. Hmm. Well, I think I'll head back to the car. Uh, there's the post office, by the way. Randolph, Nebraska. Let's see, uh, median home value here is 99000 So that's pretty cheap. So with $1,200 household income, yeah, you can make a pretty good living here. Another number that really stuck out for this town is the high school graduation rate, 93%. Now there is the fire station that people often want to see. Uh, they have a little Dalmatian statue on the front of it. Check it out. See if you can see that. Pretty cool, huh? Um, crime is a little high. 2.8 incidents per 100 people last year. U.S. average is 2.3. But the great majority of it is property crime. And there are a few assaults. So, I don't know. You know what that sounds like to me? It's uh, some people drinking in the bars there downtown, or one of the bars. Maybe got in an argument. Destroyed a chair or two, a bar chair or bar stool. So he got some property crime and he got assault. What do you guys think? If that's what happened, it would not surprise me. Anyway. Randolph calls itself the honey capital of the United States uh, because apparently a significant percent of the population of this town are beekeepers. Uh, there's that. I was wondering if they had a place to get gas here. They do. Cardinal Express, it's called. Uh, let's see what the price of gas is here in rural Nebraska 317 for a gallon of gas here well I'm in residential and um, this is pretty much what it looks like everywhere just a lot of middle-class homes all in excellent condition manicured lawns well, let's see, I'm on Jackson Street, and here is a house for sale. This one right here. What do you guys think they want for that? All right, uh, well, with that, I'm gonna head to the next town. It's a cute little house. Yeah, I'm going to head to the next town. I'm trying to get you six towns today. So I got to keep it moving. Well, everyone, I am entering the town of Belden. Belden's very small. There's just over 100 people here. Peak population was right at 100 years ago, 1920. There were about 300 people here then. Median age is 38. 57% of the town is male. So 43% is female. The town is 100% white. 
here's the very small downtown. Just making a quick stop here. This town is uh, kind of in the middle of all the other towns I'm visiting, so I thought, well, let's take a look. Eldon's Garage. Hmm, Belden Fire Department with one garage. Looks like they have one uh, fire engine, I guess. And there's the post office. Cool. Now this town, like the last town, has high median household income. Uh, 76300 a year. That's almost $1,500 a week. Median household income. Oh, well, here's some more of the fire department. Now that looks new and modern, doesn't it? Anyway, yeah, incomes, again, are really high. Even though it looks... Well, I don't know. I don't know if a fading town is an apt description. Kind of looks real nice, doesn't it? Uh, there is some older houses here. Uh, here's one on the side here. Oh, wow. Would you look at that? The uh, potential there is incredible. It's really an incredible looking house. And even with all the faded paint, there's kind of a beauty there, isn't there? That is something. You think anybody lives there? I don't know. Now, let me give you the median home value of this town, which is kind of surprising given that the median household income is nearly $1,500 a week, but the home values here, the median home value is $51,700. Yeah, a little over $50,000 you can get a house. So high incomes coupled with homes that are inexpensive. Really doesn't make sense, does it? Now, how about poverty? You ready for that? 0.07%. Less than 1% of the town lives in poverty as defined by the U.S. Census. What about children 17 and under? It's usually worse, right? Zero. The poverty rate for children in this town is zero. That's crazy. Now, crime is a little bit higher than I thought it would be. Last year, 3.2 incidents per 100 people. So, they had three crimes last year, approximately. <laughs> huh. Anyway, something, huh? Fascinating town. Whoa. And it is a farm town. Here, let me adjust this gimbal. I'm on the edge of town now, and what do you see? Yeah, a lot of farmland. Look at that. Yeah, we see you, guy. Yeah, the houses, a lot of them look just like this. Uh, despite all of the or despite the high income this is what yeah this is what a lot of the houses look like I mean the potential there in that house is crazy there's a beautiful house there a little paint it's almost like some retirees are moving in with pretty high incomes 
and maybe they're just coming in and they're seeing cheap homes, inexpensive homes, and they're buying them up. Yeah, this is a lot of what you see. This in a town with incomes nearly 1500 a week. It's got a little park here in the downtown, which is right here. I'm back in the downtown or city center, as they like to say in Europe. Interesting. Well, just wanted to give it a quick look. Uh, Want to head to the next town? Let's take a look at this caboose first, though. Pretty nice addition to the downtown. Oh, it looks like they have a bar of some sort. Or no, it says family dining. The Brass Bell Family Dining. It's not open though. Amazing. Alright, on to the next town. Next up, the town of Coleridge. Now, let's see. There are a little over 400 people here in this town today. Peak population was, again, third time in a row, a little over 100 years ago in 1920, when there were 700 people here. Median age is 47, so this is an older town. 51% of the town is male, so 49% is female. 93% of the town is white. 2% is black, 1% Hispanic, 1% Native American. And the last 3% are mixed. Now I'm heading towards downtown. Again, uh, the median household income is high. A little over uh, 55000 a year, that's 1060 a week that people are living on. Uh, couple that with low uh, cost of living. The median home value here is $71,000. That's, uh, that's pretty inexpensive to get a house. Poverty is a little higher though here, 16%. cruising in a downtown here. Looks like the fire station is right here. Yeah, there's the fire station. And then they have a gas station right here. Looks like it's 324 for a gallon. Hefner Oil and Feed. Little store there. Now, this town, like the one a couple towns ago, has a bulletin board in the main, I guess you'd say the main intersection. How funny is that? To see that again. Let's see what it says, shall we? Uh, Parkview Haven Fireworks, July 3rd at dusk. Green chairs, no food. They don't want you bringing in any food, I guess. <laughs> Let's take a look here. Look, they have a bar and grill here too. Rodeos, bar and grill. Let me adjust this thing. Yeah, can you see that? I wonder if that place gets lively. What do you guys think? Kind of a quaint downtown though, isn't it? Uh, looks like they have a church here. Pilgrim Congregational United Church of Christ. It's kind of pretty, isn't it? The building.
Well, let's see. Uh, one other number I still have for you. That is crime. Last year, three incidents per 100 people. The U.S. average is 2.3. Now, they have another little gas station here. But I don't think there's any gas for sale. Dino's Mini Mart, it says. But there's bags on all the pumps. But it looks like the store is open. So it looks like they've got a couple options for buying some goods. Don't know if there's a grocery store here. I haven't even seen a Dollar General. I have yet to see a Dollar General in any of these towns. I just realized that. Have we fi uh, finally found the place where Dollar General hasn't taken over? I'm wondering. I am entering the town of Laurel. Laurel, Nebraska. I'm gonna cut a left here and drive into downtown. I took a drive through it once already. It's really beautiful, but there is no one here. I know it's Sunday, but it's about noon. Church is let out. Hasn't it? I don't know. But look, there's downtown. It is... Wow, there's nothing here, or nobody here. It's beautiful, though. Uh, let's see, let me tell you about the town. There are... 970 people here. Peak population was in 1980. There were a little over a thousand people. So the town's pretty much holding its population. Median age is 36. So it's a little bit younger town. 53% of the town is female. So 47% male. 94% of the town is white. 2% Native American, 1% Asian, 1% Hispanic, and then the last 2% is mixed. It's a gorgeous downtown. Uh, I had read that in 2021 they spent $2.6 million to revitalize this downtown. You can see it. Yeah, you can see where the money was spent streets and sidewalks and uh, landscaping it's really nice all the buildings look I mean they look in good condition it's pretty impressive now um, like all the other towns median household income is high uh, 56,000 a year that's uh, almost 1100 a week that's pretty good money this in a town where the median home value is $98,000, which is inexpensive. So, yeah, cost of living. Quite low here. Crime is really low. Last year they had one incident per 100 people. So that's, uh, well, the U.S. average is 2.3, by the way. Well below that. So that's about one crime, 12 crimes total last year, if my math is right. Now there's a little supermarket right here, right on the edge of downtown, hometown market. Anyway, here I am heading into residential. You can see the flags lining the streets. It's almost 4th of July, which we will be spending in South Dakota. I've heard 4th of July is pretty awesome in South Dakota. We're going to find out for ourselves. We're going to be in Pierre, the state's capital. But we'll talk about that later. You know, it's funny. I made the remark that I hadn't seen any Dollar Generals yet. What do we see in the very next town? Dollar General. Here they got a little motel. Pretty nice, in good shape. Well, I'm in residential now. You can see for yourself. 
<laughs> it looks real nice. Now I haven't told you this yet, but a really famous person was born here, James Coburn. Now if you're older, you know who I'm talking about. Your younger folk might not. But I would dare say in the 50s, 60s, even the 70s, uh, that James Coburn was a superstar uh, in acting. He's one of the great actors of the time and one of the great actors in history. Anyway, that's a small town. I'm driving right, <laughs> right into uh, the country pretty quickly. Well, this little guy is just uh, running around loose. I guess you can do that in a small town. Well, uh, it's a lovely town. Uh, this is pretty much what it looks like everywhere. Really beautiful. You can see for yourself, it's a pretty awesome town. So, uh, all right, two more to go. town of Wayne. Now Wayne's numbers look a little bit different than the four previous. First of all it's bigger. There's almost 6,000 people here. But some of the other numbers aren't quite as gaudy if you will as the other towns. But it's because it's a college town. Wayne State College is here. Uh, there are about 4,100 students there. So, that's about 10,000 people here in the area, 40% of them being college students. So when you see the median age is 23, well then that makes sense. Um, interestingly though, I, I looked at the breakdown of the population, uh, the age groups. The biggest age group here is children. 37% of the town is between the ages of 1 and 19, 37%. Another 30% of the town is ages 20 to 40. So some of that is college students, I'm guessing, but there are a lot of parents here as well, young parents. Now the median household income is 46,000, uh, almost 47,000 actually. So that's 900 a week, which is still pretty good, but definitely lower than the other towns and I think that's where uh, the college students are making themselves felt you know because college students don't have much money uh, they usually have very little income here's some other numbers 85% of the town is white 9% Hispanic 2% black 1% Asian and the last 3% is mixed. Uh, Poverty is pretty high, 20%. But again, college students. Children 17 and under, it's 8%. That's pretty low. That's about half the uh, what the US average is. Uh, the number that is high, though, is folks 65 and older. Poverty level for them is 30%. So that is uh, quite high. Some beautiful uh, houses here though. Beautiful neighborhoods. Another number that uh, kind of grabs you is the high school graduation rate, 96%. Now, that's really high. And I think I found this courthouse. Yeah, there it is. That is beautiful. I'm going to tell you about that in a second. Uh, median home value here, 136000 So that's pretty high. Homes are worth a little bit more here than the, the other towns. Yeah, here it is. Wayne County Courthouse, built in 1899. That is impressive, isn't it? 
Now that is Richardsonian architecture. I've shown you this type of architecture before. Uh, Henry Hobson Richardson was an architect, I think the late 1800s, who used the Romanesque style. Yeah, so this is Richardsonian Romanesque, uh, which is 11th century medieval Europe in style, but his architecture in particular looks like castles. And you can totally see that, can't you? Let me adjust my uh, thing here. That looks like a castle. Wow, that's beautiful. That is such an unusual building. A famous person was born here. Pretty famous. If you watched Walking Dead, you know who I'm talking about. Emily Kinney. She was also in the TV show Masters of Sex. I watched that also. Yeah, it's a beautiful town. <laughs> I mean, wow. Now they have a local chain of restaurants here in Nebraska called Runza. I was told by a subscriber to no matter what, go have one of their unique sandwiches. All right, Nakalina, I'm calling you out. I'm gonna try one. It better be good. I've got my Runza sandwich, some uh, Mountain Dew to wash it all down with, some uh, crinkle fries. I love crinkle fries. Yummy. Anyway, this sandwich is reading about it a little bit. Uh, they bake the, fre uh, the bread fresh here every day. It's kind of a stuffed sandwich, I guess. Or, I don't know, no, I guess it isn't. But it just looks like ground beef and cheese and some other things in there. Let's see if it's good. Mmm. It is good. It reminds me a little bit of... Well, I don't know what it reminds me of. It is good, though. Yeah, it's not your traditional burger, for sure. Uh... Yeah, you can see they just got um, ground beef and it's seasoned. I'm not sure with what, but it's really good. A little bit of cheese in there. Well, all right, there it is. I have had Runza. Wow, look at the horns on those guys. Those are beautiful animals. Very active. I'm entering the town of Wakefield. I wasn't going to come to this town, but then I, for laughs, looked up the numbers and I'm like, whoa, this town is very different. Now there's 1,500 people here, a little over. That's peak population. Uh, the town is growing. Median age is 36. Uh, pretty young town. 25% of the town is nine years old or younger. And 23% of the town is between the ages of 20 and 39. Those are the two big uh, population groups. What does that tell you? Parents with kids. That's what that sounds like, doesn't it? Now, 52% of the town is... You're waiting for me to say white, aren't you? Nope. 52% of this town is Hispanic. 47% is white, and then the last 1% is mixed. Yeah, we'll stop here. Check that out, huh? Is that like a uh, 
Bowling alley, maybe? Skating. Lanes and dining. Huh. I got a store here, the fair store. It's a nice downtown. American flags everywhere. Of course, 4th of July. Uh, you're seeing the Hispanic influence, obviously. Tacos uh, Valenzuela, I think that's a restaurant. And then they've got a Mexican market, looks like, of some sort. Tienda Mexicana Guerrero, meats, dairy, fresh produce. Okay. Now I know that they have a factory here, an egg processing factory that employs 800 people. I thought I was gonna to have to look for it. Looks like I've already found it. I bet you that's it over here. Uh, let's look at this first though. Uh, is that La Michuango Canna restaurant and hotel? How about that? That's kind of beautiful. No, that's not kind of beautiful. That's really beautiful. Anyway, this factory that employs 800 people, I would guess that's the um, top employer. Pretty safe to say. Let's see, I should be able to see it here to the left. 800 people, there's, I'm guessing, uh, That's a lot of people. I mean, that'd be over half the town, so obviously it employs people from outside of town also. But from what I understand, Post owns it, the cereal maker. Yeah, that looks pretty big and involved, doesn't it? Let's, hey, it looks like there's more of it over here. Yeah. Uh, the residential area of the town looks real nice let me give you some more of the numbers as I uh, drive down some of these beautiful streets look at it really beautiful um, let's see the median household income back up there again 53,000 a year that's a little over a thousand a week. It's pretty good income with low cost of living. Median home values here are 93,000. Poverty is very low, 3.3% poverty, very low. Um, crime pretty low too, 10 incidents per 1,000 uh, last year, 1,000 people. Beautiful church. The U.S. average is 23, so that's less than half the U.S. as a whole. All right, everyone, so that's going to be the end of this video. We are heading up into South Dakota next. Uh, we will be spending 4th of July weekend up to the other side of the 4th of July in Pierre, the state capital. I'm going to tour the Capitol building, see some fireworks there. I'm also going to tour some small towns uh, more towards the center of the state. So, those are coming up next. Be looking for them.